This is one of our frequently asked questions. So um, we are going to kind of go through, we have a little slideshow for you of some of our um, popular resources that we'll go over. Um, and uh, we're we'll answer questions as we go along if, you, if we think it's kind of on track with what we're talking about, but we'll definitely do Q&A afterwards um, to hit very specific things. Uh, we have a little handout um, that you can take notes on of covering some of the points. Uh, it's something that we, Tim and I actually uh, pulled together. Um, and we also, you'll see that we have a handy website that Tim and I pulled together. Uh, and the main thing about um, the archives uh, for the city and county of San Francisco is, and why we're going over a lot of the information that we have there is by being the archives, that means a city agency can't dump anything. They have to give it to us. So we have the majority of the resources that you'll need for building research, but we have on the back of the brochure other places to visit. Um, and, um, and the key things that we're going over are things that uh, if anyone's worked with the planning department on um, doing something with their building, these are the, um, we're going over those resources too. Much of the same information, similarly formatted, is available through our website. Uh, you can go to the sfpl.org SF History location, that website, and it will bring up um, a list of, well, a lot of information about the History Center. One of the links is to this How to Research a San Francisco Building with live links there at the bottom. Uh, so anything that's online and fuller descriptions are available there. When you're doing building research, probably the best first stop is the San Francisco Planning Department's website. Uh, they are property information maps. Um, you type in your address, it brings up the street with your building highlighted. Uh, what you'll notice is that there are several different tabs. It may be hard to read, but property zoning, preservation projects, building permits, et cetera. The two tabs we find most useful are the property tab, which has the basic information that the planning department currently has on file for your building. And then the preservation tab, which has, among other things, further down at the bottom, a list of historic surveys and whether or not your building is one of those that was surveyed. If it was, it will have information. So in 1976, the city did a survey of buildings throughout the city. Not every building, but a decent number. And they will have a link through to a scan of that survey, which can be very helpful. Similarly, the Junior League did a survey, again, of just structures they thought were neat, and their files of information are on deposit at the library. So if that is the case, it'll say Junior League and then Y for yes. So those are two surveys, the Junior League, the 1976 survey, but there are many other neighborhood surveys, like the North Beach survey, among others. Most of the time, we have a, a printed copy of those surveys at the library. Um, and sometimes you'll find a link through from this website. The next real stop, if you have not had any luck with the surveys, is to get the name and date of usually the person who had the water first turned on for your property. Um, that ends up being, for many people, the first entry point. Um, and the Spring Valley Water Tap records are at the library on microfilm. And what this will tell you is the date of connection for the water line, the name of the person for whom that was done. That can be the owner. It could also be a contractor or a builder. And it gives further along the page, uh, the very specific um, length in from the cross street. So on occasion, there are 
There are buildings that don't have a number. Maybe they didn't have a number at the time that the water was connected. And if you look at these records, you can see, oh, it's on the north side of the street, 50 feet east of Buchanan. And that can give you a sense of, oh, maybe this is my property. Um, so, and this is, you can't really see it, but this is the date of connection, the name, what they call a water number, which is probably an, an account number, and then the street address. Um, further over here, and there's another page you don't see, that's the one that's giving the north side of the street, 50 feet east of Buchanan, that sort of information. Um, what you'll notice here also is that this number was crossed out and a new number written in. And that is oftentimes one of the uh, red herrings that you'll come across for some structures is that the number here has changed from what it currently is. So that the original number was 45, but it got upgraded to you know, 95 because a few more buildings went in. Uh, you can actually go to the Public Utilities Commission or call them, in fact. I, I think we've heard of folks who have called and gotten a copy of the water applications that are on file there. So it's slightly different, but it is similar information. Um, who filled out the water application and when was that done? Okay, moving on. Lock books. Property ownership. This is the stuff, the block books will, will show the size of a lot and who owned it at a certain point in time. Um, so again, this is ways of amassing names to help you do some of the research uh, on the, the property and then the structure. And this is the 1950 through 60 um, Green Street, which was originally a lot owned by Isaac Hecht, um, who was German, came to the city, opened a number of stores, and had stores in Boston and Baltimore as well. So, um, but that's showing you who owns the property, not whether there's a building there. It's very specific information that way. Um, and just to add a few more things about what Tim shared. Um, so the reason that we start a lot with the water tap records and is because that's what the city considers. They use that connection to water as the built date for a building. So that's kind of where that is used a lot. We do have issues with people out in the sunset where they have wells and all that stuff, but we don't really have that over in this neighborhood. And then um, the uh, few other sources that Tim showed you, which are block books, which you find who owned the property. Um, that is, we have the information before 1914, and then if you want to find out who owned the property and transfers of ownership after 1914, you go to the assessor's recorder's office. And these are all on the back side of the little handout. So like every time we're referring to somewhere else, we got it here. We have heard that PUC, you can call them and they tell you they're really friendly and they tell you like all this information. Assessors, recorders, I think you have to go in person. Haven't heard them as, you know, even though we're all sister city agencies, haven't heard as much success stories with assessors, recorders office, which is funny because you give them a lot of money if you own things. <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, not that you don't give PUC some water money, but anyway. So, um, we are going to now talk about structures and buildings. Um, so, um, Sanborn maps are, um, these are called Sanborn fire insurance maps. And what they are is Sanborn Fire Insurance was a private company and they would go out and survey uh, the structures to identify, um, you know, if the building is, um, you know, to evaluate for fire insurance. And they would do it over a series of time. So even though this says we have 1886 to 1991, um, it's broken up into series. So it's not that they did it every year because it's a big job to go around through the city. 
Um, so we have um, the majority, a good chunk of them are online and um, through a database that we pay for. Um, so please use it. And all you have to do is get use it with your library card or you can access it from the library catalog. I should say that we do have original Sanborn maps in the archives, um, so you're more than welcome to come use the, some of the print ones that we have, but um, these are fun to use from home. You get a map like this, and then this is where there are structures. Um, and the reason that you would use this uh, is to see if your structure has changed over time. Um, and so a lot of people um, like, uh, like there's like this little building back here, a shed. So if you're arguing something with the planning department about this cottage that you have in the back, you could say, well, it's always been there since 1899. So they would agree and then you get to keep your cottage slash shed. Um, so that's how and why it's used a lot. Um, so it's just structures. Um, the other fun thing would be like if you wanted to see how like um, different businesses have changed over time on like a commercial area or stuff like that. So, um, so anyway, I highly recommend looking at these when you get home. Um, so, <laughs> and so what you would do is you would map these to do change over time on your structure. So that's why you would use Sandmore maps. Um, and then but there's so many more things you can do. Okay, <laughs> and I'm back in the driver's seat. One other thing that is really useful about the Sanborn maps, especially looking at them over the course of time, is that if the building number has changed, it'll be captured there. So that oftentimes we have had people look something up in the water tap, thought that they, their structure was not there, moved on to looking at Sanborn maps, found that in earlier Sanborn maps, it had a different number, and then they've kind of backtracked to the water tap, found the building. So once you've done sort of the structural stuff, sometimes uh, one, of, one of the things, at least, that the planning department likes is to get information on, you know, did George Washington live there, sleep there? You know, all of those sorts of things uh, which add character and history to the structure. Um, and so what you can do is look at journals and newspapers and other things, real estate sales, et cetera, uh, and see what you can find. In this case, um, I actually just focused on looking at the San Francisco Chronicle for the purposes of today. Uh, the Chronicle is available online again through the library's databases uh, for the period 1865 through 1922 as a full text searchable database. Um, but there are several other, in addition to the Chronicle, there are other newspapers to look at. There's The Call, um, which is also online through the Library of Congress and the California Digital Newspaper Library. Collection. And, um, so I, there are many other places to look uh, along with architectural journals. And again, there are links through to online or scanned versions of all of these. Edwards Abstract is something, the original needle in a haystack publication put out by the recorder's office. It details deed transfers along with building contracts, along with mortgages, the level of particular information is mind-numbing. However, <laughs> if you've got some good dates, uh, it can also be very interesting reading because along with um, the deed transfers, which can be helpful, uh, you can find sort of short abstracts of building contracts. So if you're trying to figure out when did my building actually go up, who built it, was it a famous architect? This would be a useful place to go. And, and the librarians at 
the History Center are there to help because this is not something that I would just start leafing through. Building and Engineering News, a similar sort of entry. Um, these are, they're fantastic and can be very useful. Um, they include apartment buildings along with big civic structures and houses. If your building falls into the right time period, there are different uh, journals to try uh, for more information. Now, who lived there? Oh, still me. <laughs> um, so one of the, the more amusing things to look for is um, who lived in my building. Um, not always who slept there, but that would be for the newspaper. So in this case, uh, the city directories are also digitized. There are links through from <laughs> the website. And they do actually give more information than the current phone books. So um, I think it is worthwhile to take a look at them, particularly if you've got a name to start with. But they will often have a spouse's name in parentheses. Um, so you can also use that if you're doing, say, genealogy as well, or just interested in who all the family is. Uh, you can get that uh, in addition. Um, and I will turn it over to you now, Christina. OK. Um, it's easy to find out who owns something, but not as it's a little trickier finding out who lived there. So my building was built in 1907, so I wanted to know who was there. Um, so I figured out a way, if you use Ancestry, which is a database that we subscribe to that you cannot use from home, you have to use it at the library, but you can also access this if, you guys, if anyone's already an Ancestry user. Um, but uh, there's a way that you can go in and um, it's called California Voter Registration. So it's a database within Ancestry and there's a way that you can search this database um, once you're in by putting in your address. So this is how you can find out who was registered to vote there. Uh, so this is what you'll see. Um, you'll see the name of the person and their residence and then their occupation. So um, that's kind of, that's how you can find out who lived there and if there was somebody famous or that type of thing. So if you all are just kind of curious, which I was for my own apartment, um, then uh, this is the best way to do that. And then once you get names, then you can kind of use that um, in the city directories to kind of keep going, tracking them. So now we're coming to um, photographs, um, which is a whole other world. Um, my job is actually photo curator, so um, I'm going to highlight some of those. Uh, we have about 2 million photos in the collection, 40,000 online. They're never going to be all online, okay? So just so you guys know that. <laughs> so you're going to have to come <laughs> visit me. <laughs> I've, I, everything you're going to see here, I scanned, so you, had to, you have to come visit. Um, and we have all different formats. Um, so we have photos. So I say 2 million photos, but a lot of them are actually, um, we call it visual materials. So we have um, acetate negatives. Um, we have color slides, we have uh, prints and albums and glass plates, and so we have all different formats. So, um, and we have on our handy dandy sfpl.org forward slash SF buildings, I have a whole thing about how to find photos of a building. So I t we tell you how to keyword search our database, start there, and then, um, then there's all these different collections that you can navigate through. Um, so, oh, look, there's Tim modeling for me. <laughs> so yeah. um, that's the photo desk, and he's um, using, so one of the collections that you can use is um, the Department of Public Works albums. Um, so DPW like to document everything that they did in regards to street repair or building structures or um, that type of thing. And the way you navigate it is using this little card system that came with the albums. Um, so you look up a, um, your street, because that's how they would have identified it as a project. 
Um, and so you would do what Tim's doing in the photo. And then you'd find it, and then you write down the request, and then I go pull the album for you, and you get little white gloves, and you look at the album. Um, but you do see that there's homes in the background, or the buildings are in the background. So um, that's usually, you know, people want to find a photo of their building. Um, a lot of times when we've mentioned the planning department, um, you know, if you want to change something like a facade or you want to go back to that original facade, you know, you have stucco now, but you want to see, you think it was shingled a long time ago, here's the proof and that's how you can do it. So the, that's how the DPW albums can be exciting. Um, another source is um, we have some 1938 aerials. So this is, um, these are just kind of fun to look at. Um, but you can also use them if you want to argue about like a tree or something, or if you have a driveway. I don't know, I'm just trying to randomly, I know I'm randomly picking things, but I've helped people about trees or driveways or that type of thing. So, you know, if like, if you see a tree here and then your neighbor wants to cut it down, if it's in this aerial, you get to keep the tree because it's historical. So these are very important things. Um, but they're also, the other reason you would use these 1938 aerials, if you go back to the Sanborn maps that we discussed, there's a huge gap. We have 1915, and then it takes a leap to 1950. So there's this gap in between, and so sometimes if you're trying to figure out something about a structure, these are a good in-between. Here is another thing that we have, um, which is the San Francisco Assessor's Office Negative Collection. Um, so these, we have about 65,000 negatives from the assessor's office and they date between, it's like maybe 46, 47 to early 60s. And they're divided up two ways, um, one is by address and then one is by block number. And you'll get the negative and I, get, I give you little white gloves to wear and you look at it on the light box. Very exciting. Um, and then, and if you're all fancy with your uh, mobile or your iPad, you'll have an app where you can photograph it and then switch it to a positive. Or you can order prints to be made um, or a scan. And then another collection we have is the Robert Durden Color Slide Collection. Um, so these are, Robert Durden was a local San Francisco resident and he was an architectural enthusiast and he went around and surveyed properties you know just with his camera for about um, 40 years so um, but he has a big chunk are from like the 80s and 90s for these you get um, uh, no white gloves but you get a little loop to view him and the light box <laughs> so because they're all in the little things so um, yeah, so there's those. This is the History Center, so this is where you'll come visit us. <laughs> um, we're really helpful. This is Andrea at the reference desk. Um, so we are the archives and we are special collections and we are special. And what that means of being special is that we do have a few little rules. Um, so we ask folks to sign in at the reference desk and you can only use pencils and you have to check your bags. Um, but we are the quietest place in the main library, which is kind of exciting. And um, we're all like really enthusiastic and super knowledgeable and not quite lifers there, but <laughs> we're also, I think we probably have 100 years of institutional knowledge if I did the math between all of us. So, um, and we all enjoy living, um, you know, working, living. <laughs> living in the library that's how many hours we're there um, working there so um, and yeah so please visit us and do your research there um, we are celebrating our 50th anniversary as well as being special collection yes if your house is on a street where there are major major changes for example lumbar oh yeah quiet as green at one point yes and when they built the Golden Gate Bridge the state declared eminent domain and made it into a six-lane highway. So the houses were all cut, house lots were cut in half from Van Ness all the way to Richardson. So 
And, and as a result of that, some of the houses that were maybe behind a house had to be moved to the side of the house. Oh. And so what, how do you research that in, in terms of, and there were other Geary Boulevard, for example, and other right. other major changes. So um, how would you research that? Um, well, I would start with all of our steps that we have and then um, see where that leads you and then go from there. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and, well, and what is true is that a lot of the photographic evidence can be very helpful. Right. Um, I know that that is true for a lot of the, well, like the extension of Market Street, the, yeah. it, it, I mean, there are a number, it, just as you're saying, there are a number of significant street changes which affect where the structures are. And I, I can't remember what, I was helping someone with research where we were looking at um, the changes in the width of the sidewalks because of you know, the street being widened and therefore the sidewalks which had been something like eight feet were then four feet or something like, I, I mean, or yeah, or that one might be like DPW because they might have that something in an annual report or um, I've helped something, somebody similar where they were researching so-and-so's house from a, a family house and then it, the city bought it and destroyed it to build a park in the 50s. So it was like actually we found more information in rec and park minutes, you know, so sometimes, but that's why we have jobs. We right. like help you figure all that out. Like it's, <laughs> and some of it is actually all online because we've digitized it, but you still like don't know always how to, who the creator is of like making those rules or, or decisions and all that stuff. To, to add on to that, what I would say is do explore the things that are available online. Try not to be too frustrated if you don't find something immediately because sometimes what you also need to do is check in with some of us at the library who've had more experience working through them. Do you, I have two questions. One, do you, do you ever have any sort of like meetups or workshops or anything where you bring people together like on, like on a, over a period of times? Because if you say it's like it's a multi-hour endeavor, do you ever have any sort of I mean, like every day at work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> no, but I, mean, I would need incentive by the social aspect of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be kind of Actually, fun. That would be neat. Yeah. Um, but no. Okay. So that, but thank I you for that, that idea. idea. No, that's okay. <laughs> and my second question for you is actually, are you, is there any sort of preservation that's done for the materials that are on site that you, like, what kind of, how do you keep the materials so that they have, you know, longevity? Um, yeah, it depends on the yes to preservation, um, and that's kind of one of our uh, reasons for some of the items that we select to digitize, uh, because they have been kind of beat up over the years, so we try to preserve them that way, so it's not just for access to make it easier, but just to kind of preserve it, um, and then same with the photographs, and then that's why I hand out the white gloves and everything, because that helps with the so no prints and stuff. Um, um, and then we also, when I was mentioning that we're special, um, the other thing that we do is like we do photocopying for you so we, cause, so we have a special copier and like stuff like that. Um, so we try to, um, we, you know, we have book cradles if something's falling apart. We try to provide access to everything. Um, and to make sure that you can use things, but we definitely will be kind of like, not nervous Nellies over you, but like we definitely will be like, okay, let's get you all set up, you know, so. Exactly. <laughs> and you can, it, you know, you mentioned photocopying, you can bring a camera in and shoot things for free. Um, the, the exception to that would be photographs, um, and, but you can shoot those as well, and that's uh, for, uh, nominal fee, and that's quite, quite an effective way to approach getting pictures too. Okay, you guys are. I'm gonna see you all. We're gonna see you all, right? <laughs>
come visit. Exactly. Yeah, thank you.